Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. In this video, we're going to have a look at immune or idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, how it gets its name, and also how it may present and what we may do to treat it. Idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura may also be called immune thrombocytopenic purpura. So therefore, we know that in some case, in some way, our immune system is involved. Thrombocytopenic refers to the fact that we're deficient in platelets. And purpura refers to a type of rash known as the purpuric rash, which is quite common in platelet uh, deficiencies. So how does it all start? Well, it all starts with our platelet. And we have uh, antibodies being formed against the platelet, specifically against our GP2B3A receptor. So here, it mainly occurs in children and those who are pregnant. So here you can see we have a platelet, and in blue we can see our GP2B3A receptor. In immune thrombocytopenic purpura, we have an antibody against our receptor. Now, this antibody platelet complex is too large to pass through the spleen, and therefore it's broken down. So therefore, we end up having less platelets in our blood. So what sort of signs and symptoms might we see? Well, we might see in acute disease, things like it usually comes on after having a viral infection, and this is especially common in children who will have issues with, say, for instance, bru bruising or bleeding following a viral infection. Things like nosebleeds, because if we can't clot properly, we are a lot more likely to bleed from uh, exposed areas like our nose. Things like mucosal bleeding, so when we're brushing our teeth, we tend to bleed a lot from our gums. Purpuric rashes, because we're not able to form the uh, initial platelet plug, and therefore we get bouts of bleeding all over our body. Easy or spontaneous bruising, again, for the exact same reason. And if we have this in a chronic condition, so this is when uh, the thrombocytopenia lasts for a long time, our spleen tends to eat more and more and more and more of our platelets. So therefore, they actually tend to get splenomegaly. Okay, so what kind of investigations are we going to want to carry out? Well, again, from the name, we know that there's th thrombocytopenia going on. And from the symptoms, we can work out that there's some degree of issue with clotting. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is a full blood count. And the hallmark of ITP is this something that we call an isolated thrombocytopenia, meaning our other cell lineages, so that of our uh, hemoglobin and our white cells should not be affected. In fact, this is an effective way to potentially um, try to differentiate it on a blood count from something like leukemia, whereas often in leukemia, we're going to see a raised white cell count and a low hemoglobin due to bone marrow infiltration. Whereas in ITP, we tend to see only the platelets being involved and both the other parameters being fairly normal. The next thing we want to do is make sure this is a true thrombocytopenia. And the way we do this is by doing a blood film where we see fewer platelets in the blood film. Now, we want to make sure there's nothing wrong with the signal that tells our bone marrow to make the platelets. And we do this by making sure that our liver is working normally using some liver function tests. One thing that may be associated with any immune disease, and not just immune thrombocytopenic purpura, is thyroid dysfunction. Because often, uh, causes of hyper and hypothyroidism tend to be autoimmune in nature. So therefore, we should rule them out using some TFTs. Another thing that may be associated with uh, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura is an IgA deficiency. And although I haven't included it on the slides, it would be good to make sure that the IgA levels are normal, because a low IgA level might hint that there's some degree of ITP going on. And the, the big thing to remember here uh, is that this is a disease of exclusion. So you have to rule out all the other conditions before you can uh, fully settle on ITP. Great, so what kind of treatment options are available for ITP? Well, usually ITP tends to be, in acute cases, a self-restricting condition. So therefore, we don't often have to use anything. It should resolve by itself in a few weeks. If this is per persisting past a few weeks, or say, for instance, the patient is getting significant bleeding, we can try to dampen down the immune response using IV corticosteroids. Now, corticosteroids are fantastic at dampening down most immune response diseases, as they are very potent anti-inflammatories. Should this not work, we could potentially consider something like IV immunoglobulins to directly block the uh, circulating antibodies against our platelets. And if that doesn't work and the ITP has been going on for a long period of time, one way that we can reduce the number of platelets being broken down is by doing something called a splenectomy, where we remove the spleen in the hopes that um, we are not breaking down as many platelets.
That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.